and we're back with some more RimWorld, and today we're going to be tackling recreation. Now, if you're anything like me, you've never bothered really looking too deeply into recreation, you just throw that into buildings and it seems to sort of work and do its thing in the background. However, there's a lot of optimization you can do with scheduling and with the actual rec recreation types you use and the buildings to go with them. So if you just put in that little bit of effort, you can really maximize what you get out of it. Now, the first thing to realize is, see these uh, little four notches here? If you go above this line, plus 10 mood. Above this line, plus 5. Below this line, minus 10. Below this bottom line, you get down to minus 20 mood. That is crippling. However, if you go above this line, the decrease per hour, it's about uh, every 10%, you lose about 10% recreation every four hours. So to go below this top line, you need to have, you need to have recreated, not recreated at all in the last six hours. I Meaning once you get to 100%, it'll take six hours before you lose that minus, uh, that uh, plus 10 mood buff. And to get down to the next one, of course, takes 12 hours, which means you can keep at least a plus five mood for 12 hours once you max out your recreation bar. That's pretty awesome. Not only that though, if they perform the recreation in a room, and that they take that room's impressiveness into account. For example, this here has a very impressive rec room. So this pawn here is getting a plus five recreation room bonus that lasts for 24 hours. That's incredible. Like just the two of those combined means for the first six hours, they're going to have a plus 15 mood. For the six hours after that, they're going to have plus 10. And for the next 12 hours after that, they're still gonna have the plus five from the impressive rec room bonus. That's really, really, really powerful. And you can optimize this in quite a few ways. One of them is, well, we'll get to scheduling later, but let's just go over the different types of recreation there are, because there's actually seven, or is it six, seven? Oh, never mind, we'll cover it in a second. This here is social recreation, can only be performed at two places. One is the table and one is a campfire. Any table, any campfire, so long as this is ticked, it is by default, they can come here and socialize. However, that tick also means they can party there, so maybe you're, you're going to untick some of these to prevent them from partying in places you would not like, or gathering around campfires you're actually using for heating or something like that. But this is the only way to get social interaction. Doesn't matter if there's no other pawns around, it's classified as social interaction as long as they're standing around the table doing it. Then, next up, I thought we'd cover this one. This one's very unique, it's telescopes, and telescopes are literally their own recreation type. There's just telescopes to study, there's no other variants. For example, over here we've got your, uh, your dexterity play, but your dexterity play can consist of either a hoopstone ring or horseshoe pin or a billiards table. Uh, over here, there's a few others, but telescopes, absolutely unique in that they're the, well, barring social, of course, they're the only, unique in that they're the only building of that type of recreation that you can get. Now, one thing to note, cut a hole in your roof first. You have to remove some roof tiles here. You just use the zoning tool, uh, remove roof, your pawns will come along and eventually remove it and then you can place the telescopes in here. Otherwise you're going to end up, like I did, placing the telescopes outside and that won't get you the room bonus. If they use the telescopes inside a room, they can get the room bonus for being in, what's this, an extremely impressive recreation room. Well, actually this is an extremely impressive tomb but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit, a little while. Anyway, this here is dexterity. Dexterity play, you've got your wooden horseshoe pin and your hoopstone ring. Which one you get depends on which side you start, either tribal or city. But the wooden billiards table is only available to the non-tribal side, and this has a recreation power of 130%. This recreation power number counts because it, it determines how quickly the pawn will gain recreation out of the building. So hoopstone rings and only have a recreation power of 100%, same with the horseshoe pins, same with the tables for socializing. Telescopes are 120. However, wooden billiard table is normal. If you get a excellent wooden billiards table, that goes up to 161%. Now the material it's made out of doesn't matter, but the quality of the table does improve its recreation power. And like just for an excellent one, you get 161%, that's incredibly powerful. Oh, uh, this here is the tribal board game of Ur. It's meant to be the sort of uh, equivalent to the wooden chest or the chess table. However, its recreation power is only 80%, meaning it's worse than a hoopstone ring. This thing is the worst recreation building, I believe, in the game. So if you're a tribal and you catch yourself with a wooden chess table out there somewhere, go buy it. 100% recreation power. Uh, that's assuming it's a standard. If you get, say, a good one, that goes up to 112. Poker tables, by default, have 130% for cerebral play. And if you get, say, a good one, that goes up to 146. So sort of what you want to do here is, once you get your hands on pool tables, maybe phase out your wooden horseshoe pins and your hoopstone rings. Your pawns can still use them, and they'd be better off using these because they gain the recreation faster, meaning they waste less time and will get a higher recreation throughput for the hours spent. Same with chess tables and poker tables. The moment you get a better one, usually phase out the old ones. These are expensive, though, so you might need to have a few of them. The only differences between these is these wooden horseshoe rings, they can support up to four pawns using them at the same time. Billiards tables, only two. Chess tables can support two pawns. Poker tables can support four. Then we get over to 
tube televisions. These are actually their own type as well, television watching. Regular gives you, uh, was it, 120% recreation. These give you 140. And then you get your mega screen televisions. These can only be purchased from merchants and they give you 160%. Do bear in mind that a wooden billiards table gives you 161% just for an excellent one. So it, it's not like they're super duper, but they are quite good for what they do. Now you'll notice if we click on it here, you'll see this area here. This is where they can watch television from. The smaller televisions give smaller radiuses. I've just outlined them there so you can see what all of them sort of stack up against each other. That is five types of recreation. You got your social, you got your telescopes, you got your dexterity, you got your cerebral, and then you've got your uh, televisions. So what's the last two? Well, the last two are social and chemical. Uh, for chemical, that's basically beer. You can see here under recreation, they've got chemical consumption of 18%. That's tolerances. We'll cover those in a minute. But if you drink a beer, you will gain 17% of your recreation back. In fact, if you eat a fine meal, you'll get about 4.5% of your recreation back, it seems. But let's cover something that seems a bit odd. In the uh, wiki, it tells you that you can't, you have to have your chairs facing a television. We'll notice Sora here is quite happily washing a television and she's sitting on the chair, well, effectively backwards. And you notice there that the recreation is still going up quite happily while they watch the telly. Oh, I just noticed it gives you, you can see little flickers of light. Ah. Okay, did not know that. Animations you miss. So that is six of the recreation types, and the last one is solitary. Now, excuse me while I pop to the wiki. This here is the activities table as listed by the wiki. So you've got your study for telescope, relaxation is social, television, etc. But here is the solitary ones. And there is six. Start sky gazing, meditating, praying. Oh, meditating and praying is both done in the pawn's room. So the better the room is, they'll actually gain a bonus to their recreation for doing it in the room if they have a, a room bonus. Uh, going for a walk and building a snowman, nothing you can do about those. And then visiting grave. If you have a grave in your in your recreation room, you can also gain the room bonus for them visiting the grave inside. So if at all possible, you know, have them a decent room and make sure that the graves are located in a recreation room. Help yourself out while you're at it. Now, down here, you'll notice the consumables table. You know, beer gives plus 17%. Ambrosia is barely there. And in the rest of this is not actually so much chemical recreation, it's gluttonous recreation. Pretty odd one. So how do you take advantage of this knowledge to give yourself the maximum in recreation? Very simple. Put as many of your recreational buildings in an excellent room as you possibly can. That would be the first step. Have an extremely, like, just convert your dining room into a recreation room or have it, it's dual purpose. Your dining room and your recreation room should be pretty much one at the same, especially early on. Later on, you're going to be spreading out more and you'll have multiple dining areas. But for the time being, the moment you have a decent or good recreation room, start chucking all your buildings in there. That includes hoopstone rings. Hoopstone rings and uh, horseshoe pins. Early game, yeah, the moment you get a decent room, throw them in there where you can grab the bonus. That means you're also going to want to put your telescopes in there. Also keep an eye out for the telescopes. You can only purchase them, so grabbing one or two of those when they show up is a good idea. They're not even that expensive. Uh, at the same time, put your graves in there also. You can use the gra graves in, in that section so that if they do do that solitary recreation, they at least get the room bonus while they're at it. You can't really control where several of the solitary ones happens, but there is something I would like to try, and that would be splitting up the recreation. One thing you want to do is do your recreation before they go to sleep. The reason being, when pawns are asleep, the recreation meter does not go down. So what you kind of want to do is max out the recreation meter before they go to bed. They pop into bed and they will have the plus 10 on them. That means when they're asleep, and um, this is to do inspirations, the higher their mood is when they wake up, the more likely they are to get an inspiration on that morning. So having them do their... Uh, your recreation before they go to bed maxes out their mood before to go to sleep, increasing your chances of getting those nice and powerful inspirations. At the same time, I'm thinking we're going to go for a second recreational bar right in the middle. Now this is, uh, well, this will depend on your playstyle, of course. For example, if you are running a, a build and you're trying to do a giant perimeter wall around the outside of your base, you don't want your builders coming back halfway through the day, walking all the way into the center of the base to do some recreation before walking back out again. But for anyone who would be, say, working in some sort of crafting or tailoring capacity, this would definitely help keep their mood up all day long. Or anyone who has low mood in general and you need to keep them happy, stick them in an extra recreation section right in the middle of the day. This is eight hours away from wake up and eight hours before they go in for their second batch of recreation. This will help keep them maxed out. At the same time, if they do on one of these go for an annoying solitary recreation, you don't have to worry so much because when they come back for the second round, they will be bored of the solitary recreation and instead they'll come back and do a different type of recreation which should put them inside one of your impressive rooms that will allow you to get that nice recreation room bonus going. I'm going to update the wiki to reflect that you can use a television even while sitting backwards in a chair. However, I'm going to hold off until this video is out a few days, so if you have any comments as to why I shouldn't update the wiki or maybe there's something I'm missing here because as far as I can tell, 
Miss Pong can quite happily sit on a chair facing the opposite direction and still watch the television. And as far as I'm aware, they can also use chess tables that way as well. Oh, and that's one good thing. When you're putting down your tables, maybe you put the chairs like this and then stick in the chess tables in the middle. Only two people can use a chess table or a game of war, so it just allows you to, well, use them quite conveniently. Oh, and do remember, poker tables... Only four chairs required. I completely blanked that music is actually a form of recreation now since the expansion. So playing music can actually be used as a recreational activity. If you check under here, this is a, a recreational power of 100% for a normal harp. A good one goes up as high as 112%. You can also get a harpsichord and a piano. They're basically just more improved versions of this, though an awful lot more expensive. One last note on beer as a form of recreation. Consuming a beer is a recreational activity, but it's also a food activity. However, if you consume a beer, you're, you'll go to the nearest table to consume it, but that counts as impressive dining room, not impressive recreation room. So it will refresh your dining room mood bonus, but it won't refresh your impressive rec room bonus. One final note when it comes to recreation. Do remember when you're using this that only a limited number of pawns can use each device at a time. So it might be a good idea to only have as much pawns in a schedule as the recreational buildings can support, at which point you might want to start offsetting the schedules. For example, there's those six pawns offset from each other by two hours so that they come into the recreation room at different times. This way they shouldn't overload things. However, this is a, this is just an example with six. Realistic, you'd be looking at about... 12 to 15 pawns before you really start worrying about this and it actually becomes an issue and you can always just counteract it by building more recreational buildings. In fact, in this colony here, the corridor system is in fact its entire own room. You'll notice here that there's uh, doors up this section, but there's no doors at these other intersections. So this entire area is just one giant, enormous, extremely impressive room. What this means is any tables placed in here, any people eating at them, will get an extremely impressive dining room bonus. Uh, by the same token, you could put in poker tables, billiards tables, that type of stuff, you can put in all the recreational buildings in such a hallway. So just remember when you're thinking about rooms, it doesn't necessarily have to be a big square room, you can elongate them or just use them as an entire corridor system and place in what you want where you want. It does make it a, a lot simpler when you can just plop down a building wherever you need, cuts down on travel times. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Mm -hmm.